Hey guys, Infinite Dice here. Uh, just giving you a brief update on the bombs and ordnance uh, code that I'm working on, part of the weapons. I know a lot of you guys are interested in how it's uh, coming along, and this is uh, a little update. So, uh, from uh, this is an earlier um, stage that uh, that I had it when I recorded this video. I didn't have any voice, so I'm doing the voiceover. Um, the bombs are simply attached to um, certain hard points that you'll that you'll be able to place anywhere on your aircraft. Um, you basically, once you load the aircraft into the game and, you're, and it's running, you can right-click on those hard points as long as you're EVA, and you can load bombs onto those hard points uh, by choosing. Uh, selecting and then loading the hard bomb. So here we can see, I think this is a 500 pound bomb hitting, and you're going to see where it explodes, but you're going to see some actual uh, splash effect um, effects being generated on any part in range that, uh, that that gets hit. So that's kind of good. So uh, eventually, the way I have it now, it's kind of free, but the way it's going to be is it's going to be quite like um, the other stuff I've made for the ICE engines, uh, the bombs will be loaded EVA, and you're going to have to have a source for the bombs somewhere within 40 meters, so uh, the bombs aren't going to be free. You're going to have to have an actual source uh, stockpile, uh, like a depot, and I'm going to include uh, you know, ammo boxes and depot uh, uh, containers so that you can actually your station perhaps, and you can actually load from. The carrier, of course, will have all three. It's going to have an oil station, a repair station, and it's going to have a um, build onto it. That, of course, will be a standalone part for the carrier because um, I don't want to, you know, impose on pe that, that people use uh, all three of the mods, of course, but if they are using one, you can simply use the CFG for that and copy it over and get it prepared for the carrier for for that kind of operation. So in this uh, sample section here, I'm just uh, d taking a long shot from way over there, showing that the projectiles can easily hit something further away. Again, this is an earlier implementation of the code, so it's not perfect, but uh, I've come a little way since since this. So also in the naval footage that I had from a couple of videos back, well from many videos back now, um, I, I showed that it, it was possible to hit targets uh, over five kilometers away. Uh, giving you a little update on the guns. Uh, I know I haven't uh, been giving very many updates lately, but uh, that's generally because I've been busy with real life stuff, and on the side I decided to play around and launch the um, ICE module. Um, again, sometimes I get bored with what I'm doing, or I hit a little pitfall, and uh, uh, I decide at that point, hey, I'm going to just step back for a sec and uh, take a little break uh, before I lose it, and uh, decide to quit. Uh, the mod, so <laughs> I didn't want to do that, so I decided, hey, the, the better way to do it is just to take a little bit of a break and uh, come back at this later, uh, which I did. Um, today I tried a little bit of code to help me fix some of the problems I was having, but now I think I have something that's an improvement that uh, I couldn't have boasted before. So if we take a few shots here, you're going to notice... Um, a few things. So this is the lightest gun I have here. These are just test models, of course. Oh, this one here is more finished than the other two, but um, this is the smallest caliber. The smallest caliber is 30 caliber, uh, 762. Uh, so if I take shots, you're going to notice that these are in fact hitting the little armor panels I've put on this part here. So if we take a look at this part, we can see that the structure is 2473, basically like hit points. And if I'm taking, sorry, if I'm taking shots with the small gun, I could have mapped these to different keys and saved myself some trouble, but anyway, I like doing things the hard way. If I take a look at it again, it's still 2473. So what that means is the small caliber gun can't pass through my armor panels. Um, they're blocking them. So if we take a look at the 50 cal machine gun, Okay. Now what we're seeing here is uh, 
they are also being blocked by the armor, and the armor itself is not actually being damaged by them. Oh, hold on. Oh, we have one that has a structure of zero. So we do have one that has been penetrated. And we're going to check our main one, 24, 73. Okay, so we take a couple more shots. Okay. Let's see if we got any more. That one has zero now. Oh, no, hold on, it's not the same one. Zero and zero. So two have zero. Uh, if we check here, 2473. So these are being blocked by these armor points. Now, I, I don't know if I have the entire thing running as, as it should be, but in any case, the armor, once it's been depleted, will basically either be destroyed or allow bullets just to simply push through it. So that part will be next. Um, so the fact that I can actually stop the bullet before it actually hits the soft spot. Um, means that the armor is working. Uh, we're going to fire a burst from a 30 millimeter cannon. And as you can see, it totally surpasses the armor's capability to stop to be stopped. So um, 2473. Now when we fire at the again, it hit another armor panel that time as well. It's just blowing these armor armor panels. Around. So 2473, let's see. 2457. Twenty-four forty-one. So now that the armor panels are gone, uh, thanks to this heavy cannon blowing them off, if we go back to the 762 or the 30 cal. Okay. 2388. So now we're now we've gotten through the armor with the heavy cannon. We're actually able to blow this away with the smaller cannon now. So that's what I wanted to show you. Um, again, not too much of an update, um, but the armor panels and the damage system and the ability to shoot something at high speed has been pretty much solved. So the next implementation, or the next step in my implementation, will be um, um, once uh, an armor panel is reduced to zero, it's going to basically either be destroyed, or it'll actually probably, actually, instead of destroying it, I might either give it a chance to be completely destroyed, or have a chance of just letting, or the, the, op the, the other alternative to having it destroyed would be just to have or any other projectile simply pass right through it like it wasn't there. So essentially I'll turn the collider off on it once it reaches zero and then anything going through it will directly hit whatever's behind it. Anyways, that's all I have for now and I'll talk to you guys later. Hey guys, um, the game adding a little bit more to uh, what I've already shown. This is an example of a, an armored vehicle um, using the armored plates that you've seen uh, I was shooting at before. Um, up on top here I have Kerbal seat, uh, Kerbal with uh, 30 cal. And it's it's a fixed position. It doesn't rotate or elevate. Um, I might be implementing a rotating elevating type uh, uh, mount uh, later on. But for now, uh, this is just a static forward. Um, on the back, you're going to see, well, first of all, you're going to see that the, the bullets are coming out, the, the resources are being depleted for the bullet type. And uh, once it's completely depleted, it doesn't fire anymore. And on the back here, I have an ammo crate full of that ammo type. So what you have to do to rearm these things is you, it doesn't transfer like fuel. Um, what you have to do is you actually have to EVA your Kerbal and you have to open the gun for transfer, open the ammo crate for transfer, and then jump back in and transfer. So it's kind of strange right now, but it probably will be, it'll be accessible through EVA to transfer them. Um, but, uh, you know, in real life, reloading ammo is, uh, is a process. So, I mean, you have to get the, the, the you know, the, the vehicle or the crate that has the ammo in it, and you 
basically have to transfer the ammo over. Sometimes it's a motorized process where it actually has to be, you know, the belt has to be wound into the actual uh, aircraft or vessel or whatever the case may be. And in some cases it's a little simpler than that. It's just an ammo box and then you basically take the uh, the, the, to the chain or the, the chain fed ammo and draw and put it up to the, to, to the gun into the chamber and just, you know, you know put it in that way. But um, in this case I wanted to make it a little more challenging because you don't I don't want uh, it to be too easy to basically you know uh, suck ammo from all over the ship unrealistically so um, in cases where a gun a turret would have a lot of ammo uh, on one feed um, that will be fine that the gun will have a higher ammo capacity uh, on other systems where you might have an auto loading system where um, uh, the internal on uh, the kerbals on the internal of a battleship would be moving um, shells and stuff forward, um, there will be a time delay. So once the magazine inside the turret is empty, or directly really near the turret is empty, it will then be uh, reloaded, but at a defined um, reload rate. So that uh, that would account for kerbals inside running the stuff back and forth. So that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I just wanted to show you another example of how some of these would be used, and how they're reloaded.